This is The Last of Us Part 2 Maximum Graphics at 4K with FSR4 Native AA on an RX 9070 XT. The game looks gorgeous, and FSR4 is a noticeable improvement over FSR3 in overall image stability. Interestingly, the FSR3 implementation in the game is actually not bad at all, and even more interestingly, it's more stable than DLSS3 CNN model, although it does suffer from some disocclusion artifacts, which can be rather distracting, but we're going to look at FSR3 and 4 in more detail in just a few. It's been a very pleasant experience playing this game on the brand new RDNA4 GPU, but an issue we ran into in my previous video with the NVIDIA RTX 4090 was that running with an unlocked frame rate in the beginning area of the game had some camera panning screen tearing issues. Something others in my comments section were experiencing as well in some areas of the game. Now at this time, I thought it was the game's fault, but looking at the same area on the 9070 XT with an unlocked frame rate it works brilliantly and is very smooth. Whatever it is that is causing this issue on NVIDIA GPUs needs attention and it's quite rare because I've spent many hours playing on both brands actually. Anyway though, getting back to the 9070 XT's overall performance in the game, as you can see, even at native 4K with FSR4 AA, it is able to maintain 60 plus in the most demanding areas I've encountered all the way up into the 70s or 80s in the indoor areas. That's really good and the game looks really good as well. Now, if we drop FSR4 to quality, the game looks practically just as good, but you're able to raise your FPS by around 30 to 40% from native AA, which is very nice. Playing the game on a 120Hz 4K OLED TV, this is perfect, at least for me. But if you want higher frame rates, you will need a somewhat capable CPU. The game can be quite CPU demanding, especially caching shaders on the fly throughout the game. As you can see, my 7800X3D seems to hold up pretty well here, and I'm just using a cheap tower air cooler, by the way. But if you had a less capable CPU, or you have one of those new fancy 4K 240Hz OLED displays, which I need one pretty badly, uh, you could just throw on FSR frame generation. As you can see, with FSR frame generation on top of FSR4 quality, we're able to get close to that 200 FPS mark, which makes the game a lot more visually fluid. And yes, half of the frames are quote unquote fake, but the other half are real and they're pretty high to the point the game feels very good to play and very responsive. This game also supports anti-lag too, although I don't have much to say about that as I haven't really looked at it and I'm not a competitive multiplayer type of gamer. I'm not really as sensitive to latency as some people. Now, Sadly, my 4K display tops out at 120 hertz. So I'm not really benefiting much from the frame generation. It's just causing a bunch of screen tearing for me, actually. That's all I have to say about frame generation, though. But the way I've been playing this game on my 9070 XT is with FSR4 set to quality and a 90 FPS frame rate cap via Riva Tuner Statistics Server. And the game is visually consistent and feels great to play. The RX 9070 XT offers a great 4K gaming experience here. It looks good, be it with or without upscaling. You should be able to hit 60 FPS at a minimum with all the graphical settings maxed out. Alright, so if we shift our attention to what I consider to be the biggest selling point of the 9070 XT, which is FSR 4, and we look at the FSR 3 versus 4 differences in this game, well, the biggest one for FSR 3 that I personally find a bit distracting and is common in pretty much all FSR 3 games is disocclusion artifacting, which you can clearly see while riding a horse especially, but fast movements will cause it as well with the fine detailed backgrounds like grass fields and trees. Or for example, if you look at Dina here just walking over with the spores in the background, 
uh, it can be quite distracting. And that's something that FSR 4 pretty much takes care of and it gets rid of and it looks pretty nice and pretty clean. The next improvement comes in overall image stability and reduced flickering. So FSR 3, although it is a pretty decent implementation in this game, FSR 4 has an upper hand when it comes to flicker. The image is more stable and this can clearly be seen when comparing, for example, Joel's and Tommy's beards. And the same thing happens with fine grass and other objects as well, is that FSR 3 is less stable, understandably so, whereas FSR 4 is actually very stable. Now, it's not just that FSR 4 is more stable and less flickery, but the overall reconstruction is also sharper, and it looks more closer to native 4K than it does on FSR 3, where the image does look a bit blurrier than it does on FSR 4. Even if we compare FSR 3 to the DLSS CNN model, yes, FSR 3 is overall more stable, less flickery, but DLSS CNN model does look a bit sharper. Uh, the reconstruction part of it is a bit closer to native 4K. As far as how FSR 4 compares to DLSS Transformer model, I may make a dedicated video about it in the future, but DLSS Transformer model looks the most stable with the most detailed reconstructed image, although FSR 4 is pretty close here. They both provide an excellent anti-aliasing slash upscaling method. Now, I did run into an issue with DLSS Transformer model that I'll point out. I also saw in Ghost of Tsushima, by the way, under the right conditions, like with heavy volumetrics in this scene and a ton of spores in the air, when pan in the camera with the Transformer model, you get this like horizontal lines grid artifacting that I only saw in this scene. And if you look at the same thing with FSR 4, that doesn't seem to happen. But both FSR 4 and Transformer model just launched and they'll continue to get better and improve as the predecessors have before them. And DLSS Transformer I think is still in beta, as far as I'm aware. But anyway guys, that'll be it for this video. I understand there's been some issues with this port, but on this hardware, which is on the higher end for sure, I understand that, the game runs and looks great. The 9070XT does a great job with a 4K target resolution, no upscaling required, no messing with the settings, just max them out and you'll get a 4K 60 plus experience. And having access to FSR 4 for anti-aliasing or upscaling is great. I wanted this video to be a bit different instead of just showing the performance, but take a bit of a deeper look at the advantage of RDNA 4 in this title. Naturally, it took me a bit longer to put together, but I hope it was worth it. If you think so, give the video a like and subscribe for more. Leave a comment. I do value your guys' feedback and recommendations, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.